Welcome to our chair yoga session. The movements that we'll be undertaking are planned to be gentle, but at all times, please don't do anything that you feel uncomfortable with. In particular, pay attention to knees, to lower back and neck. There shouldn't be any experience of pain in the body, but these are the three critical areas to absolutely be attentive to avoiding pain. Make sure that you're sitting on a chair that is on a surface that isn't going to slip. So I've got a dining chair here on carpet. Um, if you're practicing on a shiny floor, a yoga mat or something similar might be um, a good support to place under your chair so that it doesn't slip. If like me, you're short in relation to your chair, then place some um, supports underneath your feet so that you're effectively creating a platform to let your, your feet be a little bit higher. I'm using yoga blocks, but you can improvise with blankets, you can improvise with cushions, essentially to enable the thighs to become level with the floor. Sitting halfway on your chair so that there's a bit of a gap between your back and the chair rest. Just check that your pelvis, your, your buttocks are sitting parallel to the front edge of your chair so that you haven't got an inadvertent twist to your pelvis. And then we're just going to go through some basic um, alignment principles so that we can come into what's known as chair pose, uh, sorry, mountain pose. And this is the pose to come back to any time you feel that you need to rest. So starting off with the lower parts of the body, pop your two fists together and the distance from the outside edge of one fist to the outside edge of the opposite fist, that's the distance you want between both your knees. So that's your hip width distance with the knees pointing straight ahead. And then you want that same distance between your toes all the way to your, your heels. Check that the ankles have a 90 degree angle between the shin and the tops of the feet. That your knees also have a 90 degree angle so that your lower legs are stacked directly into the knee joints. As I've said previously, Thighs are level with the floor and you might need some platform underneath the feet to, to lift the feet a little higher. Also check that you've got a 90 degree angle between the tops of your thighs and your trunk so that you're not leaning forwards and you're not leaning back. You've got a vertical neutral line of the spine. Let the shoulders reach out to the sides and relax down away from the ears and let the crown of the head gently bob up with your chin parallel to the floor. And the arms are relaxed. So this is your mountain pose. Come into this whenever you need to catch a breath, feel some ease. Just do as little or as much of this practice as you wish. Beginning with movements in the neck, take a breath in and as you exhale, Lower your chin to your chest, nice and slow, being aware of how this feels in the back of your neck. And then as you inhale, slowly glide your chin up so that you end up gazing towards the ceiling directly in front of you rather than overhead. Let's do that again, exhaling, lowering chin to chest. And then on an inhalation, a gentle inhalation through the nostrils, Guiding the gaze up so that the throat feels a bit of opening. And once again, so three repetitions in total, lowering chin to chest before gliding the chin up again. Coming back to the start position, let's do some side bending to open up the sides of the neck. Breathe in and just feel that the spine is gently elongating on the in-breath. And as you exhale now, Lower your right ear to your right shoulder. The right shoulder stays relaxed. It's the neck that's bringing the right ear down, the head down. Breathe in, lift your head up. 
And with your next out breath, take the left ear down to the left shoulder. And we're going to repeat that both sides twice. So on your next exhalation, lower right ear to right shoulder again. On the inhalation, lifting the head up. Once again, left ear comes to left shoulder. Make sure your gaze is still straight ahead. Bringing the head up. And one more time, right ear to right shoulder. Coming up. And finally, left ear to left shoulder. Bring the head up again. Just notice how the neck feels with that little bit of side bending. And we'll come into one more movement where we'll take the head, the neck through a turn to the right and to the left and do that three times in total on both sides. So breathe in and feel as though the spine is gently extending down through the sitting bones and up through the top of the head. As you breathe out, take a turn of the head to the right side. So keep the trunk steady and just go as far as you can gently turn the head making sure that the chin neither lifts or lowers to try and get more range of movement. When you're ready to inhale, reverse the movement so you're looking straight ahead once more. And with your next exhalation, slowly glide your head so that you're turning to look over the left shoulder. Again, the torso stays steady. You're just simply allowing the neck to turn the head. Breathing into face forwards. As you exhale again, turning to the right. On the inhale, facing forwards, releasing the rotation. The next exhalation, rotating to the left. Facing forwards again. And one more each side as you exhale, turning to the right. Inhaling to face forwards, exhaling to turn to the left side. Facing forwards one more time. Let's bring the rest of the spine into those movements that we've just done in the top section of the spine in the neck. So we're going to come into a fuller movement. Take a breath and to elongate the spine again. And now as you exhale, round your back, bring the chin to the chest again, but you're going to pass Put the shoulder blades and hollow out the back. And as you inhale, let's curve the spine the other way. Maybe the hands slide back towards the thigh joints as you lift your chest up, rolling the shoulders back. So make this movement as small or as large as you feel comfortable to do. Exhaling again, rounding the spine, feeling that opening along the back. And then smoothly on the inhalation, let's lengthen, open up the front of the trunk by letting the shoulder blades squeeze together and down, letting the chest lift up. And exhaling again, rounding at the back, curling forwards. Turn smoothly on the inhalation, arch the back. Shoulders rolling back. Return to a neutral position into your mountain pose. Coming into some side bending of the whole spine. And we're going to do three repetitions on each side. So just bring the hands down by the sides of the torso, about the sides of the chair. Take a breath in and as you exhale, take your right ear to the right shoulder again. But then just start to explore Coming down a little more deeply into a side bend. You can go as little or as much as you wish. Make sure that the chin hasn't dropped down. Breathing in, coming up to your start position. Ready on the next exhalation to take the side bend to the left. Left ear comes to left shoulder. And you continue to bring your trunk over to the left side. So it's a deeper side bending movement throughout the spine. Inhaling back into a straight line. On the next exhalation again, over to the right. Right ear to right shoulder. And perhaps finding that naturally there's a little bit more range that's opened up because of the repetition that we've already undertaken. Inhaling, 
to an upright position. And one more time on the left, left ear to left shoulder and maybe coming down a little bit more over to the left side. Breathing in, rolling the torso back up, just taking a moment in mountain pose to just take stock, see how that feels through the spine. Now cross your forearms so that you bring your left arm forwards over to the right shoulder and then your right arm crosses over. Take a breath in to elongate the spine and as you exhale, let's take a turn to the right side. So starting off with the belly, corkscrew movement of the torso around to the right and the head's the last part of the body that moves. And then as you breathe in, Come out of the twist so that you're facing forward. Stretch the arms out to the sides. And let's cross the arms the other way. So now we bring right arm over to left shoulder. Left arm back over to the right shoulder. Breathe in and on the exhalation, let's turn to the left side. So it's just the upper part of the body that's moving, the legs are steady. Breathe in to come out of the rotation, extend the arms out. We're going to repeat that two more times. So we bring left arm over to the right shoulder, followed by right arm crossing over. Take a twist to your right. Coming out of the rotation, take the arms out to the sides. And change the crossover again, right arm coming over, followed by left, taking a turn to the left side. On the inhalation, releasing the rotation, open the arms out to the sides one more time. And take the left arm over to the right shoulder, take the right hand over to the left, take a twist to your right, going only as far as is comfortable. Inhaling, coming out of the twist, and then taking another twist over to the left side. Releasing the twist, lower the hands down, just coming into a place of pause, just to see how the body feels. Let's do a little bit of movement now with the shoulders and the arms. Beginning with the shoulders, take a breath in and let's start to now roll the shoulders up, back, down, forwards. So you can make the size of the circles as small or as large as you like, but perhaps take your attention to the shoulders and see how they feel as you create this circular movement. Taking the shoulders up by the ears, back, down and forwards. And the next time your shoulders have come down, let's reverse the direction of the circles. So we're now taking the shoulders back and up and forwards and down. Still keeping awareness in the shoulders to see how they feel. And then when you've done one more circle, give the shoulders a little bit of a shrug out. And again, just settling back into mountain pose to pause and take stock. As we continue with some more arm movements. On your next inhalation, See how far you can comfortably take your right arm up. It might be a small degree. It might be a little bit more. You might be able to reach up higher. Open up the fingers and then draw the fingers together as if you're plucking a fruit from a tree above you. And then lower the hand down. And let's do the same thing with the left hand. On an inhalation, extend the left arm as far as you comfortably can, which might be here, a little bit higher where you can possibly reach up, spreading the fingers wherever you reach and then bringing the fingers together, lowering the hand down. Let's do that two more times each side, breathing in, extending the right arm up, spreading the fingers, 
clasping the fingers together as you lower the right hand down. On the next inhalation, extending the left arm up, spreading the fingers. You can look straight ahead or look up if your neck is comfortable. Lowering the hand down. And again, reaching up with that right hand as far as is comfortable, spreading the fingers and then drawing the fingers down. And one more time on the left side. Spread the fingers as you extend the arm up. And then draw the hand down, bring the fingers down. Finally, bring some movement into the wrists and the fingers. Have the arms by the sides of the body and start to circle the wrists. Doesn't matter which direction you go. Start to slowly bring the arms up to shoulder height in front. And then change the direction of the circles as you lower the arms back down by the sides of the body. Change the direction of the circles again, but this time allow the arms to extend back. You won't be able to go as high as you did with the shoulder, with the arms reaching back as you could do with the arms reaching forwards. And then Change the direction of the wrist circles as you glide the arms forwards again, back to the start position with the arms by the side of your body. And once the arms have reached by the sides of the body, just flick the fingers. Just feel as though you've got some water droplets on your fingers and you're just letting them flick away. Place the hands back on your lap. And let's focus on the lower part of the body, starting off with our knees. You can keep the hands on your thighs, or if you prefer and you feel more stable, you could always hold on to the sides of your chair. Either one of those options is fine. On an inhalation, let's take the right foot off the floor, straightening the leg, but without locking out the right knee. And then on the exhale, lower that right foot down. And let's switch sides on the next inhalation, breathing in, picking up the left foot. On the exhalation, rebending that left knee and popping the foot down. Let's do two more each side, breathing in, lifting up that right foot, lowering the foot down, breathing in again, lifting up the left foot, straightening that left leg, and then lowering the foot down. Third repetition, Take the right foot up, low the foot down, and final side on the inhale, straighten the left leg, and then lowering the left foot down. So our knees should feel a little warmer with that movement. Let's come into doing some movements with the ankles now. Pick up your heels so that the balls of the feet are still on the floor. We're just going to start to rotate the ankles around. So don't worry if there's any clicking sounds. That's quite normal. And you can allow the movements to be quite small. And with each repetition, as the ankle joints warm up, you can allow that movement to become larger and larger. Or you can keep them small if that feels the most appropriate size of circles to make right now. So light pressure through the balls of the feet as I pick up my heels and circle them around. Just lower the heels down momentarily. Let's just take stock of how the ankles feel. They should feel warm. And let's lift up the heels again and circle in the opposite direction. Again, perhaps the first one or two repetitions are on the small side, the small side, and then maybe as you get underway with the circles, they naturally get a little larger. Making sure that at all times the movement is comfortable, that you're not straining, that you feel relaxed. Settling the heels down. Shuffle yourself a little bit further forwards so that you've got a bit more freedom of movement for the backs of the legs. 
but only shuffle as far forwards as you can without compromising feeling stable on your chair. Both sitting bones still need to be very comfortably established and supported by your chair base. Go ahead and extend that right leg. So you're just straightening the right leg. The heel is down and you're just lifting up the toes so that the toes point up to the ceiling. And then wiggle the toes. So you're curling the toes in and then straightening them, curling the toes and then straightening them just to bring a bit of mobility into the toes. And then reset the foot back so that it's stacked under the right knee. And we can repeat that with the left leg. So we're just going to extend the left foot, heel is down and the toes are lifted up. Toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. So you can feel a bit of a stretch on the sole of the foot and up along the calf. And then again, it's just like this blinking traffic lights movement. Just going to allow the toes to flick, curling the toes under and then letting them release. And then stepping that foot back in, so you're back in your mountain pose. I'm going to move my, my blocks to one side for the next movement. If you're using blocks or cushions under your feet, you might want to do the same, just so that you can have a broader base under your feet. So if you've used any supports, just put them to one side and reset your feet and your knees to be hip width apart. Pick up the heels and then take them out and then pick up the toes and turn them out so that gradually, we're doing this heel toe movement to take the feet as wide as is comfortable to get a stretch on the inner thighs. And we'll reverse that to come back to our start position. Lift up the toes, followed by the heels, followed by the toes, followed by the heels. Coming back into that hip width stance. So we're going to do that two more times. Go at your own pace, go as wide as is comfortable. And again, maybe as you get familiar with the movement, it becomes more comfortable to potentially lift the toes a little higher and then lift the heels a little higher as you step out to the sides and then return the feet to being hip width apart again. Coming back into your start position, letting everything quieten down after having done those movements. Allow me to guide you through a relaxation sequence now. So for this, you want to shuffle back in your chair so that your back is supported by your chair back. If you did have a platform under your feet, that would be very useful to reposition that once again so that your feet aren't hanging down. This is a good time as well to possibly gather some cushions around you which you can place between your back and the chair rest if that allows you to feel comfortable. And also a blanket or a shawl or some socks if you feel like layering up because your temperature, once temperature tends to drop once we become um, still again. So it can allow you to deepen your experience of relaxation, just putting some layers back on. Once you've got yourself comfortable in your chair and you feel warm, either have your hands as I have with the palms facing down. Alternatively, you can rest your arms with the palms facing up or Third option is to bring the right hand to rest in the left hand. Doesn't really matter which of those three options you pick, just choose one that allows you to feel the most comfortable in this sitting position so that there's no sensation of the arms feeling pulled from the shoulders. Once you've picked one of those, just check that your chin is level with the floor. If you've got glasses on, it's a good idea to just take your glasses off just for the few minutes that we'll undergo a relaxation sequence, you'll find that your 
able to drop down more deeply into ease if the glasses are to one side. And now either close your eyes completely, or if that feels uncomfortable, then keep the eyelids partially open, partially closed, but allow your gaze to be drawn down towards the floor. So that's a good compromise if you feel uncomfortable completely closing the eyes. Let go of your back into the chair rest. Let go of your buttocks and your thighs into the chair seat. So feel completely supported and held by this stable, steady chair. Soften the lips, soften the facial muscles. Take your attention to the top of your head. Soften the top of your scalp. Soften the front of your scalp. Soften your forehead and your temples. Soften your eyebrows, your eyelids and your eyes. Soften your nose and your cheeks. Soften your lips, your whole mouth. Soften your chin and your jaw. Feel ease glide over your face. Soften the sides of your scalp and the sides of your head, including your ears. Soften the back of your scalp, the back of your head. Rest the whole of your head. Soften the back of your neck and the tops of your shoulders, releasing tension. Soften your shoulder joints, your upper arms and your elbows. Soften your forearms, your wrists, your hands front and back to the very tips of your fingers. Let go of your arms. Soften your throat and your chest, your rib cage and your belly down to your groin. Feel ease glide over the front of your torso. Soften your upper back, your mid back, your lower back and both buttocks. Give up your back to your chair. Feel ease throughout your torso. Soften your thigh joints and your thighs, your knees and your lower legs. Soften your ankles, the tops of your feet, the underneath of your feet, Feeling the ease reaching to all ten toes. Rest your legs and feel your whole body settle into ease. Resting, resting deeply. As you're settled into this stillness, Rub your palms together until your palms feel warm. And then softly place your palms over your eyes so that the eye area gently absorbs that warmth before you allow your palms to 
gently massage around the rest of your face as you open your eyes slowly to adjust to the light in the room. Once the eyes are open, start to extend your hands away from your trunk, maybe reaching up to the corners of the room, maybe lifting up both feet if you feel comfortable so that the fingers and the toes spread away from each other as if you're undergoing a good morning stretch. And then bring the feet down, bring the hands together in front of your chest. Now let's close our practice by saying namaste to each other. Thank you very much. Namaste.